My name is Christina Kalb, and I'm a scientist working on the MetPlus team at NCAR. This video will cover how to run the mode brightness temperature use case. Specific information about this use case can be found in the MetPlus user's guide. Go to section 5, MetPlus use cases, model applications, convection allowing models, and then click on the mode brightness temperature verification. Looking at the information, we see that this use case verifies FB3 ensemble members compared to GOES satellite brightness temperature using MODE, the method for object-based diagnostic evaluation. It is set up to run two ensemble members, one model initialization time, and two forecast lead times. The MET Plus and MET configuration files are shown here in the documentation. If you want to learn more about mode, go to the MET Tools user's guide and go to section 17, which is on the mode tool. This video assumes that you have already installed MET Tools and set up your environment for MET Plus. Information on how to do this can be found in section one and the installation and setup sections of the online tutorial topics. Here we will be using the recommended setup, which is first passing in a use case specific configuration file, followed by a second configuration file with settings that are specific to the system we are using. So let's take a look at the use case and be sure that it's set up to be run. We'll first go into the MetPlus repository. Tutorialsystem.conf is the system specific configuration file. The use case specific configuration file is located under PARM, use cases, model applications, convection allowing models, and it's called mode forecast FB3 OBS goes brightness temp. So we'll open this file and first check the directories for our input forecast and observation data. To do this, we'll need to know the value of input base, which is listed in the system specific configuration file. So we'll pull up the system specific configuration file to check the value. Input base is set to the following path listed here. So we can combine that with the rest of the forecast mode input dir to see if our data is available. Here we see that there are two date directories in a polygon for verification. Looking at the mode input template, we see that the model date is given as year, month, day, and hour. So that's the first template seen here. In this directory, there are actually four ensemble members, but we'll only be running two for the use case. So let's check the first member and be sure that there are files here. In this directory, we see there are two files, one for the one hour lead time and the second for the two hour lead time. This is as expected. So next, we'll check the observation in input files. The obs input dir is the same as the mode input dir. So we can copy paste here. However, the date template in this case is given as year underscore month underscore day underscore 141. So checking that directory, we see that there are two goes files one for the one hour valid time and another one for the two hour valid time. Next, we can go in and create an output directory for our output data as specified by the mode output dir. We'll first need to check tutorialsystem.conf to get the value of output base. Output base is located in this directory 
and we'll go ahead and make the directory as specified in mode output dir. So our empty directory has now been created. Now let's check our input variables to be sure that we have them correctly specified. So first, looking at the model data, we can open the first file or the one hour lead time file. If we look at our configuration file, our forecast variable name is set to SBTA1613, top of atmosphere. And the level is set as two asterisks in parentheses, which indicates two dimensions. So looking for this variable in our input file, we can see that here it is, and it is in two dimensions. So that's correct. Now we can check on the observation files. Going back to our configuration file, our OBS variable name is channel 13 brightness temperature. And again, it's in two dimensions. And there is channel 13 brightness temperature in two dimensions in our OBS input file. Finally, let's take a look at some of the configuration settings that we have for mode in this use case. Here, we are using a temperature threshold of less than or equal to 235 Kelvin, defined by the mode convolution threshold. The sensor val and sensor thresh variables contain information about missing data. And the variables below those two values give information on how mode identifies objects. So now it's time to start the use case. We'll start by calling the script run metplus.py, which is in the USH directory, followed by minus C, and then our use case specific configuration file, followed by another minus C in our system configuration file. The run has started successfully. This use case takes some time to run because the model is high resolution. The met plus run has now finished successfully. Let's check the output to make sure we have what is expected. First, we'll go back to the use case documentation. Scrolling down to the expected output section, we can see that the expected output is 16 files. The first eight are for the core LSM1 member and the second eight are for the core MP1 member. Each member contains two valid times, 01 and 02 UTC valid on May 21st, 2019. There are four files for each ensemble member and valid time. The first with the ctx.txt at the end of the file name contains contingency table statistics for the objects. The second, with obj.nc at the end, contains gridded data of the defined objects. The third, with obj.txt at the end, contains the object attributes and matched pair statistics. And the final is a postscript file, which contains images of the output and objects. So let's take a look at our output to be sure that we have all 16 files. We can first open the log file and scroll down to check our output directory. The output directory is given here. So if we do an ls on that directory, we see that we have all expected 16 files. Now let's go in and check the first image. 
Here we can see many objects identified and the output looks as expected. So our MET plus run has completed successfully. This concludes the tutorial on the mode brightness temperature use case. Thank you for watching.